Hello everyone, Natalabs here. I'm so sorry for the 3D printer in the background, but this, this is the only time I can record this. And I just wanna show you how you can make horse race tests in Godot. If you haven't seen or heard about horse race tests, it's this like trend online with a bouncing ball kinda in a very like uniquely crafted physics area. I can show you what it looks like without the collision shape. So this is essentially what we're gonna be making. And you can notice it doesn't perfectly bounce off of this. That's cause I haven't set it to do to do that. Like it's not there. But I also have it so that it can bounce off my PNG drawing as like perfectly as possible. So I'm going to show you like the ins and outs of how to do this, what it looks like when it's bad. Like you can see it's not perfectly hitting, but over here it's perfectly hitting the corners. Like boom, those are perfect hits like you'd see in horse race test. But over here you can see it's like clearly going into the wall and whatnot. And I can show you the entire process. So I'm just going to make a new Godot project, even though I have one here. I'm just going to make a brand, brand new one, like totally new. Okay, horse race test once again. And what you want to do is you want to go to your Photoshop of choice. I use Affinity Photo and you just want to create a you know blank canvas. And what you want to do is I don't know how you do it in your program, but you want to get a transparent background. As you can see, if I zoom in, it's kind of hard to tell. But um, if I zoom in like on the video itself, you can see that's a transparent background. And if I just increase or if I just draw over here, um, I'm going to draw a few things like I just draw a very simple, simple background, nothing crazy. And I put in my little uh, designs of like what I want the Godot icon or whatever to bounce off of. If I just like, you know, put some stuff and if I save it as a PNG, like with the tr like transparent background, that's very important. And if I go over here to my new Godot project, just make a new scene. And I, what I want to do is I want to save it directly into this asset folder pack or not pack, sorry, but just this asset folder here. So I'm just going to copy this path, which is the path I made this project in. I'm going to cut it. I'm going to go over here to my Photoshop of choice and click export. And I'm just gonna save uh, that PNG, like I'm gonna save this PNG in the back into this uh, folder over here. It's just untitled.png, nothing too crazy. But when I drag it in, right, you can see like that's literally what I drew. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do convert to mesh instance duty. And you can see that we can have like all of our polygons kind of showing up, but I'm not gonna do that exactly. I'm just going to do not polygon 2D either, my bad. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do create collision polygon 2D sibling and boom. You can see that we have, if we just get rid of the like the base template that it generates, we have collision 2Ds generated for each like shape. I don't know how Godot does it. I just know Godot does it. If that makes sense. Like I, I don't know how Godot's math works for this, but I know it works. If you want to finish up the shapes for the back, what you want to do is you want to make a collision shape, not 2D. What you want to do is control A, add collision polygon 2D. And what you want to do is you just want to then go and outline the basics of your path. And what you want to do is you want to kind of make like two outlines kind of, I'll show you why. So this is like half of the board, I guess. And I'm just going to uh, click W to use move mode. And I'm just going to drag this to the side. I'm going to go back over here to my parent, add a collision, po uh, not collision shape, my bad, uh, collision polygon 2D. And I'm gonna, again, I'm going to outline, you know, the box. And the reason you don't want to do this is because it just makes everything a collision shape. You want to specifically get these walls. So you might be saying, oh, that's so simple. Why don't I just do this? Boop, 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 boop. Inside, then, you know, let, let's say I was just trying to make out the walls here. Boom. The issue is, you know, you could do that. That's completely fine. In fact, that's the exact same thing as doing this. However, um, I just find it easier to break it into multiple segments. Honestly, up to you. When I was making this tutorial, like just practicing, I was like, oh, it's best to split into two. But honestly, you could split into anything you want. And over here, I'm just refining that shape. I'm going to control D to duplicate remove the polygon and I'm going to draw a new one. It's okay if they overlap to my knowledge, it doesn't really matter. But again, you just want to like continuously go around it and eventually you are going to come up with your entire map. So done, that's the map. Let's just save the scene. And next what I'm going to do is I'm going to control A to add static body, right? And I'm going to drag all these collision polygons under one static body and I'm going to collapse it. That's important because now this entire thing is just one map, like all the collision shapes. But then the like the map visuals are down here on a PNG. So next you want to add your rigid body, rigid body. You want to add a collision shape. I'm doing control A to add. I'm going to go up one in the tree. So I'm going to go up one to rigid body. I'm going to add a sprite 2D, pretty simple. I'm going to add the Godot icon, pretty simple. I'm going to grab my rigid body, just put it in the middle somewhere. And I'm going to shrink my sprite down a bunch just so it's like easier for it to like navigate through and like around. It doesn't really matter what you do. I don't care about the sh shape or size. And next I'm just going to give it a, where's rectangle? Oh, rectangle shape 2D. And then I'm just gonna grab the extents and you know, make a rectangle. It's pretty simple. Uh, if you want, you can move the collision shape 2D down 
in the scene tree and then you can get a like a very clear visual like maybe you want it to be more inside or whatever um it doesn't really matter uh oops how the hell did that happen did it transform oh yeah position change so there we go if i just scale it a little bit there perfect and now i want this guy to bounce around however if you run the scene no changes whatsoever this is what you're going to get it just kind of like bounces and the reason why there's a bit of a gap if you see uh, is because there's a bit of a gap over here. And if you really want them to like, if you want Godot to like move around really tight on it, you want to decrease uh, the extents here. So instead of having them bigger, you just want them to be smaller. And if these aren't to your fancy, what you could do is you could go back to your PNG. If you just hide the static body real quick. If you want the collision shapes that Godot generates to be a lot tighter, all you have to do um, by tighter, I mean, you could clearly see here that the, the PNG is like, there's a bit of a gap here. What you could do is you could, you know, close that static body, Go back to the Sprite 2D and click Create Polygon. But then what you want to do is you want to increase, or I believe it's decrease simplification and update. Maybe setting it to like 0 0.5 helps. Honestly, you just have to play around with these uh, settings. So there we go. Shrink really helps. Shrink. Oh, okay. That shrunk way too much. But, you know, 5 pixels, I'm guessing. Yeah, that's really tight onto the skin. Grow. I'm not really sure what Grow does. In fact, you can just, oh, I guess Grow just grows it like puts that like extra padding but you know i you just have to play around with it that's that's literally all you have to do there i think that's pretty tight in fact it's tighter than before damn that is a lot of polygons it's perfect exactly what i want and what i'm going to do is i'm going to drag them into my static body 2d i'm going to unhide it and then you can see the difference like the one that's a lot more colorful is obviously taking up way less area or space so i'm just going to get rid of the old ones over here just to show that you know Godot is capable of handling horse race tests. I don't know how the guy made it, but you know, there, it's like he's actually on it. But you could say, whoa, he's getting stuck. Well, that comes down to the rigid body setting. So I'm going to decrease mass, make a new physics material, increase bounce, um, and decrease friction. Again, I just played with these values. It's not something like set in stone. Gravity scale has to be zero from my understanding. And then constant forces. Honestly, you could just apply a constant force. Um, up to you i just don't want to code anything but oh okay um we're bouncing um you can see over there it kind of glitched through that's because it was moving really fast in the thing about like these collision shapes is they're not they're not perfect they're genuinely not perfect they are horrible at calculating their um physics and whatnot but what you can do there's a lot of like little hacks that you could do for example uh there instead of adding constant force i remember testing it out with velocity a 600 by 600 works perfectly fine you want to get rid of can sleep. Uh, you never ever want it to sleep. And what you want to do is, oh yeah, custom integrator. And you want to do cast shape. That's way better in terms of figuring out like how this thing is moving. And now you can see my horse race test is kind of bouncing around, but um, the speed is weird. And if you think the speed is weird, I don't blame you. But what you got to do is you got to go to project settings and you got to search up for linear, oops, linear, come on, linear, there we go. You want to search up for linear dampening and default damp. You just want to make it zero and boom. Uh, and now what you can see is we got horse race test working um, in Godot. Again, it looks like it's moving slowly or weirdly at times, but I'm sure you could program it to have a constant speed. I'm not showing that in this video. If you want to know how to do that, let me know. I could make an entire video on the rigid body itself because it's really complicated. But just to give you the Coles notes, what you'd want to do is you want to keep the linear velocity constant somehow. I'm sure the linear velocity is changing based on the bounce and whatnot. But you can see over here, now we have horse race test. Like it's literally just horse race test in Godot. And the best part is you could duplicate this and they all bounce off each other, no problem whatsoever. And I believe even this is like a little bit of a stretch, but you could use Jolt. Oh, Jolt physics is only in 3D yet, apparently. Okay, my bad. Okay, so I was gonna say you could use the new Oh, you could use, okay, no. I just use the default Godot and um, physics, but you can see this works with like a bunch of bodies as well. And they're all just bouncing around, uh, kind of random. Uh, that's exactly what horse race test is. Like if you wanted to replicate that perfectly, you could just pouch out, pouch up all your guys here uh, in this corner and then get rid of these guys. And then, you know, are, are, they're off to the races. Let's see who gets here first. My bet is on Godot. Oh, okay, good L1. Okay, that's amazing. And that's the end of this video.